Hello chess friends and welcome to Zarov Chess Channel and welcome to a very special story that I decided to share with you today. It's a story about a new chess engine that's now in town. It's a new chess engine that's battling it out in the TCEC world. Welcome to the introduction of the Series Chess Engine. The Series Chess Engine is a beautiful and powerful and strong chess engine that's battling it out now in the TCEC world. And recently we had, I think, a clear heart here in the chess engine world. For instance, always the Stockfish engine was the strongest uh, when it comes to computer chess, uh, then Lila C zero always on the second place in my opinion this dragon engine was always the third force and now uh, the series chess engine uh, is battling it out uh, against the dragon engine and so far the result is clear the series chess engine is brutalizing uh, the dragon engine with a clear result after 30 games it's already plus six results for the new chess engine for this series chess engine so i wanted to show you really here a beautiful game in order to uh here uh introduce you this very very powerful engine and we'll see now what will happen uh what i can say about this new chess engine that it uses this um uh, monte carlo research tree like alpha zero did and like uh lila c zero is using so it's a little bit different than of course the stockfish engine and as i always like to say i'm really not an ai expert i'm really not uh here a computer expert but uh, it's something that i wanted to see really say here here in order to introduce you this very very powerful engine we'll see as i said what will happen how this uh, engine will evolve can it maybe play against stockfish i'm really curious because we really need some new engines that are maybe performing stronger and stronger then of course when one engine is becoming stronger then the other engines are of course getting it better so of course so that's what that's why i think this will be a very very interesting story and in the future we'll have also maybe a component that can beat maybe lila c0 and maybe even win some tcec event so let's check out now one great game here played by uh Sirius against the dragon engine as i said it's already a clear result for the series chess engine it's uh, brutalizing really the dragon engine with a clear result so here uh, knight to f uh, pardon me d uh, d4 knight to f6 we have c4 after the move g6 the king's indian was on the board knight to f3 we have bishop to g7 and now series uh, played here to move g3 but this was still pre-arranged we have so far the fianchetto variation i'm going to tell you of course till which particular moment the game was pre-arranged and when uh, the engines had to calculate the position for themselves so here after move g3 we have castling bishop to g2 we have d6 here by uh dragon we have knight to c3 and now after knight to c6 casting and the last uh pre-arranged move by the organizer was to move bishop to g4 and and okay uh here it's maybe not the best of lines that you can play uh for instance my stockfish engine at home uh suggests here immediately this clarification the center would move e5 i myself i'm a king's indian player i like this line uh bishop to f5 then in order to have a great control of the e5 it, e4 square that's some, something that i use but actually there is at least one kind of an idea here um, uh, about this move bishop to g4 the problem i think for white here is that you cannot play this move e4 e4 would be i think a huge positional mistake because of this very powerful pin by the bishop against the knight and you see the uh, the knight is pinned here because of the uh, protection of the queen so here if you play e4 immediately okay you have this three pawns connected in the center you have some kind of a space advantage but actually with e5 the game becomes already very very dangerous uh here for white because uh because of the spin and now black has finally uh created this breakthrough here white is uh now challenged around the square d4 and around the square e5 so uh here it's simply in my opinion too much tension here uh here for white so that's why white cannot advance the third pawn in the center that's actually the main positional idea about this move bishop to g4 but uh you see now also the problems about this move because uh here series played immediately the move d5 we have now knight to a5 attacking the c4 pawn and now comes already one of the critical moments of this opening here series plays a provocative move b3 uh here you may think knight to e4 is a possibility but actually it's not it's a huge blunder if you are playing maybe this game is white you should be really familiar with this tactic because actually it is possible here to take knight takes e4 if uh, black takes now bishop to uh, a, a a1 then you have this one bishop to d2 with a double attack against the knight 
knight on a5 but also here against the bishop so in, in one moment uh black will lose another piece in the continuation of the game so uh black gained maybe the rook for uh two minor pieces but it's simply in my opinion in the stop engine level a losing game for black uh, white is continuing the game with all of the four uh minor pieces on the board so as i said it's simply in my opinion game over here for black so that's why b3 very very provocative so that's why here c5 played by uh, dragon we have now bishop to g5 again if you try knight to e4 nothing dramatically changed because now we can take and if you want to take now the bishop is not even standing in the way we can immediately take out uh, the bishop so that's why never really never uh black can play this move knight to e4 in the continuation we have now a6 even if you play something like i don't know bishop to f3 that's not good actually because white doesn't have to take with the bishop because uh, if you take with the bishop the problem is always this one your bishop is blocked out by its own pawn and that's actually not good you may think maybe with e4 you can create some kind of breakthrough but i think that black in the continuation of the game can create a powerful blockade around uh, around the square e5 will cement the position around on dark square so as i said here taking with the bishop wouldn't be so good actually here the correct move is e takes f3 and it's really tricky now because after rook to e1 uh here black will have huge huge uh, problems in the continuation of the game rook to e1 and then queen to e2 maybe creating this battery and if now um black wants to maybe improve the position of this pawn by pushing it to e6 or something or e5 we can always take ampassan and then after f4 this bishop would be liberated then uh, this would be actually the best minor piece on the board because of this long diagonal so as i said uh here e takes f3 would be the correct idea so if you are also maybe sometimes playing this position from white's perspective you should always recapture with the pawn use simply your here space advantage that you have with this d5 pawn because we have already occupied our opponent's side of the board and actually it's now really hard for black to compete against this uh, advanced pawn with this move e takes f3 as i said simply occupying the e file getting some kind of a battery on the e file using simply the bishop's activity and even here maybe ideas can be f4 f5 with queen to c2 then undoubling simply your pawn so as i said this would be then i think a mobile pawn which can be improved in the continuation of the game it's not such a huge weakness i think to have this double pawn structure like this so as i said this would be the possible continuation after bishop to f3 so here a6 was played by dragon dragon is trying to create some kind of a space advantage here on the queen side we can now h3 as i said if you try here immediately bishop to f3 we'll simply take with e takes f3 so bishop to d7 we have now e4 uh, h6 bishop to d2 protecting now the knight because as, is as a long-term tactic maybe somehow uh this knight to e4 could work and you don't want to uh have some kind of risk so so far bishop to d2 is protecting of course the knight on c3 so here e5 we have now a4 very important move because the positional threat was of course this one b5 would i think uh create new opportunities for black black would then expand on the queen side so that's why a4 a great uh prophylactic move here by uh this serious chess engine so we have now b6 king to h2 knight to h7 and now rook to b1 so Sirius is now changing a little bit the direction of the attack now of course it understands that maybe here the b6 could be long-term weakness now the main goal is of course to play here to move b4 after c takes b4 then rook to b4 and then maybe continue the pressure here around this weakness on b6 so here rook to b8 we have queen to c1 h5 we have rook to g1 and now king to h8 bishop to f1 so okay as we said this is not uh, such a powerful bishop as it is blocked out by its own pawns by this uh by this block pawn structure on light square so that's why here series is using now this moment and changes the direction of of this bishop is trying then to play the move bishop to e2 at least to get some kind of an activity on the king side because if this bishop stays through the whole game on g2 it's of course not a good piece so so far a great maneuver by the bishop in order to improve simply the bishop's activity so here rook to g8 we have bishop to e2 bishop to f6 and now bishop to e3 queen to c8 and now h4 of course this pawn was hanging but actually nothing dramatically has changed here on the king side both uh, sides have i think a little bit weakened the pawn structure in front of the king but actually with these three uh, pieces around the king with this rook uh, here on g1 actually white has still a great protection uh, white has still a great activity and this is still controlling also this potential breakthrough of blacks with the potential move g5 so so far this move is not possible so knight to b7 we have queen to d2 very important move also to get your rook connection uh, because the rook connection is now very important in the game if something gets clear 
here then of course you want to have a flexibility to change a little bit also the direction of the attack with both of your rooks so as i said uh here queen to d2 now a fully development uh here by uh by this engine series uh we have talked about the three stages of the opening we should develop all of our minor pieces securing the king by casting and the third stage would be then maneuver the queen from the first rank and then connect the rook so it's now a fully development now we're searching again for new opportunities in the game so what should we do here from white's perspective here in my opinion the pawn structure on the king side should not be touched the only way to make progress here is with the move b4 so that's why after queen to f8 here Sirius plays now the move b4 immediately that's actually the only way to make some kind of a progress uh if you don't want to improve your of course your pawn structure too much you may maybe think that we should try something here but actually if you try of course some movements on on the king side then uh your king could be in danger so so far b for a great move we have bishop to d8 we have now this idea um uh, uh b takes c uh, c5 we have b takes c5 and now knight to g5 creating a blockade here of course on the king side because it seems to me here that black is immediately trying this g5 move it's of course a clear idea to get some kind of a breakthrough so that's why after move knight to g5 we have queen to g7 we have queen to c2 rook to f8 knight to d1 we have knight takes g5 and again a great move here by Sirius. Sirius doesn't take here with the bishop Sirius takes here uh, takes here with the pawn and creates now really imbalanced pawn structure on the king side now again some things could change on the king side because it's not a symmetrical position anymore so now pawn movements are possible in my opinion again so here series shows i think a great uh tactical preparation because here series understands that of course it's much better here uh already on the queen side but now with king to g2 even rook to h1 maybe we could also search here for some opportunities on that side of the board so a really really great move here by this series engine so f6 uh, here the dragon is using now this moment in order to break the main space advantage this pawn on g5 here we have um, uh, g takes f6 bishop to f6 and now rook to b6 this is a brilliant move which paralyzes now the whole queen side because the knight cannot move uh, the d6 is a long-term weakness and many times in these types of structures when you have this d6 uh, c5 e5 setup uh, the cornerstone of the defense is of course the d6 pawn which can be of course many times the object of a uh, white's attack so rook to b6 uh, here we have a bishop Bishop to c8, bishop to d2, queen to c7, queen to b1, keeping here the tension on the queen side, queen to e7, rook to g2, bishop to g5, and now bishop to c3. This is very important. You don't want to, of course, take or allow your opponent here to take because uh, because of this blocked pawn structure here, the d6, um, c5, e5, uh, we can always know that, that the dark bishop is not a good piece. Uh, we have to say it really. Uh, the dark bishop of blacks is always blocked out by its own pawn structure, like here, uh, white's likes for bishop is blocked out uh, here by its own pawn structure so uh, what black is trying to do is simply get rid of a bad piece here by trading off uh, here for a good uh, dark score bishop of white so that's why after bishop to g5 here series is not allowing the scenario play simply bishop to c3 we have h4 and now rook to g1 uh, king to g1 uh, h takes g3 and now a brilliant move here by series sacrifice temporarily here of the pawn because even if you try here g takes f2 then knight to f2 is coming very active into the game now actually white has here a great flexibility to get with your knight here on g4 maybe even try queen to g3 building a queen and rook battery uh, on the g file attacking for the bishop then also this pawn so as i said even if you try something like bishop to f4 i think we can immediately take and the problem is now both of this rook then uh both of this rooks would be then on the sixth rank still uh, i'm pointing out the uh, position on the queen side is paralyzed the knight cannot move because you lose the rook so you have to play maybe somewhere with the bishop and still you have to always protect your main weakness on d6 so actually it's uh, we're very very cool here that uh the series engine is holding the whole position with only one rook uh, is paralyzing many many pieces of blacks which are simply stuck there and cannot move and cannot improve their activity so after move queen to d3 here series didn't take the pawn played uh, rook to f7 we have now bishop to d2 bishop to d2 queen to d2 because now uh here 
uh, series realize that there could maybe attacking possibilities here around the square h6 we have a rook to h7 per prophylactic idea here also by uh, dragon now we have a rook to g3 it's very important now uh, i think to take with the rook instead of taking with the pawn because if you take with the pawn then this pawn gets isolated and becomes also a little bit of weakness and again the pawn structure is symmetrical which we don't want to create of course we want to uh, keep the position unbalanced so that's why with the move rook to g3 we have now even opportunities as a long-term plan even to break here a little bit in, in the center with the potential move f4 so very very uh cool cool stuff here by uh by this uh, serious chess engine so queen to h4 bishop to f3 is of course uh, protecting here the h1 you can maybe create one check but after king to f1 you didn't gain anything so that's why here it's not such a such a powerful move so that's why here after move bishop to f3 we have bishop to d7 queen to g5 queen takes g5 rook to g5 bishop to a4 but of course here uh series can also take out this pawn after bishop to d1 here we have bishop to d1 and it seems so that uh, maybe something went wrong here positionally for series because uh, still we have this uh, pawns on light source we have a light for bishop but actually the rook activity is something that we should notice here white is here a dominant position with both of both of these rooks the knight as i'm uh, as i said is simply stuck to the defense and there is now again the serious threat we can immediately take rook takes d6 because the rooks are not connected after knight to d6 then we would have the opportunity to also also take out this one so that's why here a5 now we have a rook to g3 we have uh, rook to g7 king to f1 we have rook to h7 uh, bishop to g4 here rook to g7 and again rook to h3 rook to h7 and now uh, rook to uh, a3 very important move now also to attack this one this knight is still stuck there this knight cannot move so in the continuation we have rook to e7 bishop to e6 uh, we have a rook to a8 uh, even if you try something like rook to g7 again we play simply king to e2 now there is also a huge position of threat that the king comes very active into the game as we said we want maybe play uh, to play here the move f4 after e takes f4 maybe even something like e5 then to create this mobile pawn then if this pawn is rolling then it's of course a very very uh, dangerous pass pawn so that could be sort of a long-term idea how to break here uh, in this position so after move um, a rook to a8 we have here a rook to h3 again a new check a rook to h7 now a great move here um a rook takes b7 because you cannot take even if you try here something like king to g7 uh you may think that maybe black can protect the knight further but actually this is now a huge problem rook to b3 uh, you see how this bishop is holding the whole position here now there is a serious serious threat of rook to uh, rook to g3 so black cannot defend this position anymore so that's why here after rook to h3 here um uh, this uh, drag engine covered but now uh here series simply takes rook takes b7 we have rook to h3 bishop to h3 and now after king to g8 it's of course now a completely completely winning endgame because of this extra bishop let's see now how serious play the endgame rook to b3 uh, king to f7 uh, bishop to d7 king to e7 and now bishop to a4 blocking the further progress of this pawn we have now uh, king to f6 uh, king to e2 of course you have to play active with your king king to g5 rook to b6 uh, here king to e3 king to h4 f4 e takes f4 king to f4 now check king to e3 rook to f1 now finally severs takes out this pawn uh king to g5 rook to c6 now a check another problem and now after rook takes c5 it's obviously that white is winning the game king to f4 simply pushing the pawn further we have rook takes a5 um king to e to d7 here rook to d5 simply check and now pushing the pawns further here after queen to c3 in this position uh dragon uh, resigned so really really wild stuff uh, i'm sure that this series engine is sort of an engine that we should follow now in the continuation of the tcec world because it plays i think really strong chess uh, as i said so far it's really brutalizing the uh, the dragon engine and it may maybe become in the near future even the third best engine we'll see how will it perform against lila c0 how it will perform against stockfish i'm really curious as i said in the beginning i'm really curious to see how strong this engine can really really be so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot uh, if you want to see some great games played some by some other top engines like alpha zero lila zero stockfish 14 13 and many more many more many more check out my uh, bad chess games the commented chess games played by computers and and if you want to see maybe some human chess games, check out my best chess games of all time series with some great games from the past played by Gary Kasparov and many, many more. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course